Let's say you want to predict the average crime rate for a state based on some observable characteristics about that state. So, you know, first of all, of course, you'd have to choose how am I going to define crime rate? You know, something like number of violent crimes per uh, 100,000 people or something. All right, so that being said, you could then say, all right, well, what characteristics do you think are going to predict that state's crime rate? And so, you know, you could basically pick uh, what, what ones you think are going to be related, correlated to that. And let's say, you know, just here's just a few of them that, you know, that might be, for example, the number of police uh, in that state overall, uh, you, that could even be police per, per, per thousand people or something. The average income level of that state, the average years of schooling of people in that state, the population size, who knows, maybe larger states have something versus smaller states, and maybe, you know, a yes or no question of, did that state vote, uh, you know, Democratic in the last presidential election, for example? So there could be a number of things. You could add, you know, probably 100 plus other uh, variables very easily that you might think relate, you know, help predict our uh, this Y value, our crime rate. So the way to do this, or the way to put all this, if you have all this data collected, the way to then turn that into uh, an estimation is by you doing regression. So what this is going to look like, the equation, the y equals mx plus b gone crazy, is essentially going to look like this. If I pick these five x variables uh, and this y variable, it's basically going to be y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 plus beta 4 x4 plus beta 5 x5. Right, so what this is saying is uh, when you enter all this data, and j just to give a sense of what does that data even look like, you know, just if you've uh, never done this before, on Excel, you would have six columns, uh, you know, your x1, x2, you know, they wouldn't be called x1, x2, it's probably going to be like a word or, or a phrase that represent this, like this might be, this column heading might be number of police, population, right, I'm just going to, for shorthand column, you know, your different x's and then your y, right? The order of the column, of course, does, doesn't matter. So each column is a variable and each row is an observation. So, you know, if you have all every all 50 states, then each row is one of the 50 states. Uh, and so essentially, uh, for each one, you're going to have data on that. So like this is like state one. So this is, let's say, state number one, you could, you know, uh, have them in whatever order, it's going to have, oh yeah, how many police do they have, you know, uh, maybe that 50 police per, you know, thousand or whatever people, uh, with, what's their average income, maybe their average income is 45k a year, what's their average years of schooling, etc., and what's their crime rate, maybe their crime rate is 14 violent crimes per, you know, uh, number of people, and so, point is that, all right, so that's essentially, and then you're, you're going to have row and row, you know, each row is, a data point, an observation, and each column is a variable. And so once you enter all this data, so again, if you have an Excel file with all this, you know, you upload it onto Stata, uh, and then you just type in a regression command, and then bam, it's gonna essentially, what, what any software will do, if you're trying to estimate this regression, is it's gonna essentially give you all five slopes and the one intercept. So it's gonna basically output six numbers for you. And those six numbers are these six betas. So these six betas, you know, beta zero through five, are gonna be what your, uh, you know, computer outputs. And then your task is just to interpret them. Usually this intercept doesn't really have much of an interpretation in most contexts, so don't even worry about it. You, I mean, what it is, is it's just the predicted Y value when every X is zero. That sort of doesn't make sense in this case. What does it mean for a population to be zero, you know? But, so that being said, each of these, the way we can interpret them, it's very similar to how you interpret the slope in a regular situation. In a regular situation, it's just, you know, a matter of your, uh, uh, it's how much y changes when that x goes up by one. The only difference is here, your beta one, the interpretation is it's the change in y, change in y when x1 goes up by 1, 
goes up by one. Holding everything else equal, holding x2 through x5 constant. So what that means is it's saying when that town hires, or when that state gets one more police officer, how does that impact the crime rate? Holding everything else constant, meaning even if uh, holding the, the income, the years of schooling, the population size, and the political status, hold, for all that being the same, if you just have one more police officer, how does that impact your uh, crime rate? So that's what this means. So it's a pretty powerful thing because it's not just saying, oh, yeah, but what if you're also changing these other things as well? This is saying even holding those out, controlling for those, how does that one variable affect your output? Uh, even for the same values of all the other variables, right? So, um, so that being said, uh, how then do you uh, test for uh, for uh, you know how, how then do you do a, a hypothesis test for a regression like this? And essentially, the way you're gonna do a test is really just no different than any other t-test. The default hypothesis, the default null hypothesis in basically most of social science research is that the slope is zero. So the null hypothesis is usually just this. The null hypothesis is, suppose that slope, your beta one or beta two, whatever one you're testing for, let's say you're really interested in beta one, the police officer one, right? So you would your null hypothesis is that it's zero. That having one more police officer is not gonna impact the crime rate at all, right? That's the null hypothesis. That's, again, your buddy's guess is, is one way to interpret it. And then maybe you have an alternative. Your alternative, again, doesn't really matter uh, for the most part. It's, we usually always just assume it's two-sided to be safe. But anyway, so then again, in your you know output for your regression when you do it, you're basically going to get a T and a P, and you could, you could use that. So let's say here, when you do this regression, let's say that you're... you're beta 1, so again, beta 1, that's in the population, that's when you were to get all the data, period. But if you just have it for, you know, your sample, let's say in your sample, your slope was negative 0.2 or something. Okay, so again, what this is saying is, you're wondering whether more police officers lowers the crime rate. Really, so you're wondering whether this slope beta 1 is negative. And all you know is that in your sample data, it was negative. But really, you're trying to see, is this number close enough to zero that we really can't rule out zero, right? So really, because again, beta equaling zero means there's no relationship between these two variables, between the number of police officers and the crime rate. So that's what it would mean if it's truly zero. So if it's negative in your sample, the question is, is it negative enough? Or you know, is it far enough from zero for us to be able to reject zero as the true thing, as the true case? And so for that, again, you're going to look at the p-value. And so if your p-value is less than 5% or whatever alpha you chose, right? That's whatever you chose it to be. So if your p-value is less than that, then uh, you're going to reject. Then you reject the null. And yeah, so let's say it's negative 0.2. But if the you know p-value based on that, if the p-value is like 0.005 or something, something really a lot lower than this, well then you would say, oh, I guess this is a negative enough number where I'm going to reject zero as the true possibility. But on the other hand, if uh, your p-value is, let's say, 0.13, well that's pretty big, that's bigger than the 5% threshold, so then you fail to reject the null fail to reject. So what that means is it, it might even just be the case that it's zero. So that means that we don't even know for sure if it's negative or it might even be positive. Who knows? The relationship it might even be that more police officers is more crime if your p-value is you know high enough. That means that you really have no information and that you can't reject this guess of it being zero. So, so you do that for each of these individually. You could also have a joint hypothesis test. That's where you could just look at an F uh, test as well. An F test is just saying collectively, do all of these together at least do some explaining? Do all these together at least uh, help us predict why? 
And so that's what the F test is doing is just like a joint thing. Um, but yeah, but for any to check any individual one, you would do a T test for that one. And that's again, usually pretty easily available in your Stata output. For example, you would just look at that row and you would just check and see if the P value is uh, below your threshold or not to reject it. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about here is related to this last variable that I chose here, this whether it's uh, whether you voted Democrat in the last election or not. Now, the thing is, this is what we call a dummy variable because there's only two possible values for it. Uh, usually, we just pick 0 and 1, right? So if x5 is 0, if x5 is 0, that means they did not vote Dem in the, uh, so then we'd say that they're a Republican. And if x5 is, if the value for that state is 1, then they're a Dem then it's like, yes, they voted Democrat. So, all right, so how do we interpret that beta 5? So let's say your beta 5 is, you know, uh, 3. What does that mean? We can't interpret it the usual way. The usual way would say, oh, yeah, as x5 goes up by 1, y goes up by 3. Right, that's the normal interpretation for any any uh, slope. But here, it doesn't really make sense Like as it goes up by 1, because unlike number of police officers where no matter where you are, you can always go up by 1 you know, and see what that means, this x5 can only go up by 1 once, specifically from 0 to 1, as a state goes from Republican to Democrat, right? So, so really what it's saying is, as the state goes from Republican to Democrat, the crime rate goes up by three in this case. So what this is saying is, on average, holding everything else equal, Democratic states on average uh, have a crime rate that's, you know, three higher, three, three more violent crimes per thousand or whatever than Republican states. But again, that being said, you're not really sure, is this positive number really positive or is it zero? Is this number small enough? Is three close enough to zero? where we'd say it's not really a positive number. We can't really say that. Well, again, you would just look, for that, you just do the same thing. You look at the p-value, right? So for that beta 5, you would just look at the p-value for that, and you would see if the p-value is less than whatever threshold you chose, and you'd say, oh, yeah, I guess it really is a truly positive number. But if the p-value is larger, well, then you'd say, oh, yeah, I guess this 3 is close enough to 0 that, hey, this true slope might be 0. And if the true slope is zero, that just means on average, uh, there's no difference in the crime rate between states that vote Democrat and states that vote Republican.